Hey guys, this is DFD, aka Dark Frozen Depths, back with some more Kami Hime Project. Now, this is a little tad bit of a follow up of a um, previous thing I've done. But as you know, there's recently been quests that, um, it's been for a few months now, but quests that pop up at different times, and this is a good time to try and show them off because all three of them happen to be here. But there's the gym quest, the weapon enhancement, and the adult ones. Now, the gym quest is basically the uh, the Cave of Gold ore quest without the EXP boosting um, enemies. While the other two are practically what the um, Sunday quests are, they're, where they're randomly timed the Banquet of Angels and the um, Dance of Beasts or whatever it was called. Now, there's nothing too different for the um, the weapon and add dawn quest basically, but I'll still show them anyways because they still have pretty much the same decent rate of getting everything. But this one, the gym quest is entirely different because there's no exp boosting enemies in here whatsoever. That said. You're gonna end up getting a lot of gems. A lot more than normal. The typical gem rate. Like, the typical gem rate. Take it from the um, Cave of Gold War. And apply it here. So, you want the Diamond Car Carbunicles to show the most. The Pearl ones to show is not the Diamond. The Holy's gonna give you the least, but they all give you a lot. Typically, you have teams that can really take them out. Then, you know. It's kind of hard time to play and talk at the same time. But the main thing is to try and do these quests with darkness or light teams. Especially the gym quest not being done with a dark team because you can weakness abuse there all the time. But these pop up at random times per day. Well, not random, but, um... They pop up at certain times of day, and you can only do it then. It just seems rather strong, you can blow right through this. But if I get a double attack with this, um, Berserker setup, it's pretty good. That's why I love having Gales above and bad set on my party. And Susanna was a very good pick, too, because, you know, she's got a strong nuke. That's up for best, I think it's a double hit, but okay. But the main thing with this is the fact that it gives you... It gives you an amazingly good supply gem. And sorry if you can't hear my voice or whatever, I got the volume extremely low. The sounds and the music to set the one, but I don't know if that's good enough. But the main thing with this is the fact that you want to go through this with a dark team. And look, I got 6,000 gems just off of that. The tricky part with the gem quest though is the fact that they're only a half hour. So, you might want to focus priority on those, if you don't really need them. I don't need the gems too much right now, because I can't advance the world, TYR or Gaia, so I need to get more materials for Gaia and um, Thor and TYRs. I still need Dragonic Eye, but um, the main reason why you need gems anyway is because they're awakening Tommy Hime, because they're expensive. I need 200,000 of those gems just to get Gaia's last but boost. No, weapon enhancement quest, same strategy. Just like the um, Banquet of Angels. So, you want to try and get the, um, the white face enemies to show the most, because they'll give you the SR versions of stuff. But even then, you can get a lot of drops from this. This is also decent EXP for leveling, but the thing is, the best place is still the Cave of Gold or for um 
for leveling experience points because um, the dark enemies can give you a lot. Well, most of them anyway. But it's the same as before. Seraphones are the ones you want to hope to appear the most. Personally, I don't have the buff, but it does more damage. Like, look, it allowed me to one shot her. I think I'll do a normal hit. I wanted to save it, but I was trying to do one round of attacks per fight, but it depends on however you're strong, how strong you are, just do what works. But you should get a chance to go nickel with this. Two or more, I'll rip them to shred. What? That was a hundred thousand. And I don't know if it's me, but the last round always seems to be Seraphim. But yeah, that's not much to that one. It's the same as a banquet of angels, so basically try to do your same strategy there if you've been grinding that one. Only difference is that, unlike the banquet of angels, this happens every day, at the same time. And I got a decent amount of experience points right there, too. And see a nice, well, assortment of SR items. And it goes without saying, do the highest one you can reach. Because honestly, if you can handle expert stages on events, you're pretty you're pretty much guaranteed to be able to handle any quests at any level. Just in time for four minutes. Now, this one is based off of the Wild Dances. Beasts and Spirits, or however you pronounce the name of that quest. This one, I typically say, aim for light or darkness, but use your best team. Because unfortunately, this has the same thing as the, um, the random gem accessory quest. I mean, the jewel accessory quest. Or the jewel guardian, whatever they are. The accessory quest... There's a day where it's random elements. And that's what this pretty much follows. Like, you'll get any element, any of the six, that we usually fight. You won't find the night, the, um, the phantom element in here or whatever. That's only certain events. But, um, you can get light, you can get dark, you can get fire one run, but you can get water, wind, thunder, another one. Do best as you can. I typically try to nuke the crap out of them at the start. But this one is the same typical strategy as a dance of wild beast of spirit. Just go as best you can. This is 
freaking kill her in one shot and why I have to do it again. Now, what you can get is random, but depending on who the elements pop up determines what it is, like... I had two dark and fi- and a fire. So I got chances of getting dark and fire intensely. That said, you can see you get me. R dark, SR dark, R fire, and SR fire. Because they all have a chance of dropping R and SR. They all drop at least an R item, I do believe that much. But the SR is a different story. But anyways, this is what you probably need to do from that every now and then to try and build up your characters. Because here's the thing, you do get the majority of stuff from from these type of um stages. Unless an event's very plentiful for you, like a union event or something like that. But this is how you get some really good upgrade material stuff. Unfortunately, I should be out of time if not very close to it, so I'm not going to be able to do another one really. But as you can see, you go to SP Quest and then check certain times of day, you'll be able to find it. Yeah, see, it's about to end. If I'm quick enough, I can still get in and do one more, but I don't want to try it. But as you can see, it gets you a lot of stuff. I got a nice healthy portion of gems. I got a decent amount of upgrade materials. In fact, I'm up to go use some of these. Because um, I need to go leveling up my wind stuff. There's a few SR. And now this is currently a level 78 weapon. Now it's 81. That's off of one run. Because the end weapons don't really give you too much. As you can see, you can get a lot out of this. So, pay attention to the times of day when those events go off. Those, um, they technically count as event stages. Because you can get a lot from those, and it's worth it. Let's see, I did this quite a few times, so now I just got a lot of fodder just to get to this one. I'm trying not to get the plus one item to her, because um, I only got one copy of her. That's all I really care to get. So I've got a better version of her because it's um, from another event as well. See, she's level 36. She's almost at the point of getting um, fully done. I only care to get her to level 40. But yeah, here's a better version of her up here. But as you can see, pretty pretty good for leveling up stuff. However, if you want to stick to the um if you want to stick to the um the EXP game for your Kamehime, that's unfortunately Sunday only, which is the um cave of gold ore. Because like I said, the Dark and the Sapphire Carbunicles give you the most EXP out of anything in the game. Well, not the most out of anything in the game, but they give you a crap ton of it. Seriously, they give you so much. Otherwise, if you really want to EXP grind, you have to do the accessory quest, and guess what? That means the rank 3 and rank 4 one. Rank 4 gives you the most EXP. Outside of the um, Cave of Gold Ore. But honestly, I think I've proven my point enough. As you can see, I got a substantial boost in attack power right now because of all my stuff. And then scales up even further. Plus, you'll need the gems in order to gotcha for more stuff. But I'll do it right now.
Personally, I think the daily pool is crap. Let's do it anyway. Because you can't get to the main bulk of it without doing the daily pool. Plus, I've got our weapons from it. But I'm going to need quite a few R weapons anyway, so here we go. Oh look, I already got one. See, this is the reason why you want jumps as well. Even if you're not trying to work up being Kami Hime or anything for break limits. Because the rate of R is somewhat decent here. But it can be at Dolan or Weapon, so if you see that silver pop up, then yeah. But there's no indicator if you got one or not. Not until you literally see the pool that you've gotten. Because regardless of whether you got an R up, R item, or a um, normal item, the sacro for the show. I see, I haven't gotten any in a few pools, but it's still a decent rank, though. Might take some time, but you'll still get some stuff like this. Look at this, three R weapons. Now, why am I pulling for our weapons, you might say. And I think I've pulled enough of them. Well, this is the reason why. Notice how I had some stuff like these SR items or the, um, the R Grail. Feed your R weapons to this. But, um, feed your R weapons to this. You only need one R weapon twice for these R grails. So you automatically got something that's worth like six R weapons right there. Because these are worth double what the normal R weapons are worth. Now that I got the level two, it's worth four. So take its level times two, and that's how many R weapons of value you got for your um, skill levels. That's why you want the jump stuff. This is going to massively bump up this and the SR ones. And since this is R, the, the rate of success is much higher than normal. Like, I had two guarantees right off the bat. If there's anything else, it would have dropped by now. Or not even been at 100. But it's not just that Grail, if I tried to do it with other R weapons in the same case, but there's no point to that. We do this with Grails, SR items, even spare SSR if you have them, but I'd suggest just leveling those up. Oh, look at that, skill level 4, without really trying. All because I got those from the Jump Gacha. But that's the main reason why you want to get the gem quest. That's also why you want to try and get the weapon accessory quest and maybe the um Adolan ones. Because the Adolan ones are kind of iffy, but they still help. But that said, I'm going to keep enhancing all this stuff too. Like I said, I've proven my point. I pretty much did what I wanted to show you. But this follows up on the building and strengthening your teams. I'll link that um, video in the, in the um, description if you haven't seen that one. But anyways, that's all I have for this. Take care, guys.